<laughs> and starting over, we needed to record take two. Um, thank you guys for joining us. We're excited for our Wednesday trainings. I hope you guys find it uh, valuable, resourceful, and we really want it to be interactive um, because you guys are out in the trenches uh, working and we want to hear your feedback and we want to hear what's what you guys are experiencing and just kind of prep you for what we do yes. um, when we're out showing and, and um, preparing for offers. Mm -hmm. We're in a competitive market, so every time we're out showing property, offers are due within a couple of days or that following week if you're out showing on uh, the weekends. So we want to make sure that you're following the proper steps to prepare your clients to be ready and you yourself to also be able to inform them, guide them, and advise them on the next steps. Yeah, and I think I think it's really great that we have like uh, Blanc and I talking about this because uh, the one thing that I find uh, helpful to me is that I create a system, right? Uh, most of my business is run by a system, whether it's on paper or just how like habits, right? The system is basically habits. Um, so from showing my clients to following up with them to calling the listing agent, prepping the offer, it's all most when I'm dealing with uh, a lot of when you're dealing with a lot of clients, you need to have a system so it's all efficient. So you're not all over the place, right? So I usually follow the same steps with every single client, every showing that I do, I follow a specific uh, set of steps that I, I, that I uh, follow, yeah. right? So um, I wanna ask a question and whoever wants to chime in, when you guys are out showing and you're finishing up your showing appointment for that showing with the client, how do you guys end off that appointment? Who, who, who wants to share? Chime in and unmute and share. How and you guys end that We're talking about like physically, like what do you physically do after you show someone, what is your next step after that? Does anybody know? Pixel, Fredo. Like, I didn't know physically? Yeah, that. like what do you do with your clients after you show them a house over the weekend? After I show them a house un over unmute, the weekend? Unmute, unmute, Alfredo. Oh, I'm, oh I'm, I'm not on a, I thought you said Oh, oh so Alfredo's talking right now. So, so basically, like, uh, I just, like, uh, try to set the next appointment right away, see what their next, I mean, actually, like, rewind a little bit. I ask if, if this house is even of interest to them and if they'd uh -huh. be willing or if they see themselves wanting to write an offer. And I offer to send them disclosures right away and then just ask, you know, let's say that, yeah, yeah, Alfredo, I'm interested in this home. Like, perfect. When are you guys available so that we can sit down and review the disclosures and, and you know, complete an offer consultation with you. Uh, but yeah, I think that's like the main thing that I do is just like always, always ask if, if this is a house that they're interested in making an offer in. Um, and if they are, well then just move forward with those next steps. Perfect. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. Um, so another thing that I do too, I ask them which ones are the three um, top properties from the first one being the one that you like the most. Yeah. And then whatever they say, I'm like, okay, I will send you the disclosures. And then we're going to start with the first one that the offer those are closer. Yeah. 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 And I, and I, um, that's really important because I know when we're showing homes, we're, all, we're usually showing more than three homes, right? So we want to set the expectation to know how us as agents need to allocate our time to what home, right? If the um, offers are due for their very favorite home, but they also like a, ho a home that's do next week for offers, you don't need to work on that home until later on, right? Just focus on what's what's uh, more urgent. I really offer. wanna share something guys, and I'm a little old school. <laughs> um, in the way I do my showings, I wanna show you guys something, hold on. Who else does that? Who else um, asks their client how they tier each home from best to worst? Anyone in the Zoom? Z, it's all Fredo. Yeah, yeah. I, I did that. Yeah. Tony, do you do that? I personally have something. Oh, you guys are talking? Yeah, go. I personally have something. I don't know if we can hear. Raise your volume. I don't, is, say yeah. something, Emmanuel. Here, yeah. Yeah. Hello, hello. Okay, so, yeah. So my personal thing, um, especially when I tour houses, um, I almost take it a step back. I tour houses that my clients intentionally want to write offers on. Right. Mm -hmm. Like maybe we can find out, but my thing is 
I don't show a lot of properties where it's like, yeah, I just want to check it out. You kind of want to look at it. So mine's almost like a step back where I'm going to show you some properties, but I want you to have the intention to write the offers on, let's say four properties, but you get to kind of pick and choose. Um, that's kind of like my personal go. Um, and that's, that's kind of how I like tier it a little bit differently. Um, think, not sure if anybody else kind of does it that way, but that's kind of just how I do it. This conversation is more tailored to like a new client, yes. someone that you're just meeting. Yes. I think that would be the next step. If you're working with them, you understand what they're looking for and you have that rapport to really guide them. Right. I, but I'd say this would be like a first time showing them. You don't really know what they're looking for. Um, and you can kind of gauge it that way. And it could be a first time or it could be a second time. So I really feel like you guys need to maximize your time when you're out showing the clients and showing value. I don't know who else does this or how you guys prepare your showings. I have the client full printout of the properties we're gonna see, whether it be two or three. And then I have the agent print out for me. And I give them their copy and I have my copy. The reason I do this is because if you're touring anywhere from two to five properties, which can happen, they're gonna forget things. If they don't put notes on their phone, which a lot more people do now, they're going to forget things or you're not going to know the offer due dates if you don't do your due diligence and prepare for these showings. So I always have this. Why? Because in the private remarks for the agent, it shows you when offers are due. It gives you a talking point when you're touring the homes. Mm -hmm. And at the end of each home, what I ask my clients to do is I say, hey, take a few minutes write down what you liked about this property, what you didn't like, what's a negotiable, what's not a negotiable before we get to the other home. The reason I'm asking you to do this is because after today's tour, I don't want you forget to forget what was important for you in this home because we saw three, four or five homes. So this is what I do. And like I said, I'm a little old school. You guys can tailor it however you guys want. You can have them do it on their phones and just tell them, hey, would you mind just doing some notes? And the reason I'm requesting that is because I don't want you to forget the important things about this home. And by the way, on this particular home, they do have an offer due date. You're already setting that sense of urgency. You're already setting and letting them know if they really like this home, we're planting the seed on when the offer due date is. By the way, they also have disclosures available. So I'll be able to send these to you at the end of our tour today if it's one that you like. I'm gonna do a quick fast forward to the end of the tour. It's our, it's our end of day and we saw five homes. The way you should always end your conversation with your clients when you're touring is, hey Beto, you're my client. What did you like about these five homes? What are your thoughts? How do you guys feel? What was one that just absolutely stood out? What was one that you guys didn't like? If we have to number it from preference, what's the highest to the lowest? Why are Why you, are you guys doing that? Because you wanna make sure that at the end of that showing, you're not gonna go home and chill. <laughs> you're gonna go home and prepare and send the disclosure packets of their top three, of their top two. Mm. You're going to call the listing agent and say, hey, Mr. Listing Agent, we toured your home. My clients really liked it. Is there anything we need to keep in mind? I noticed you have an offer due date. And that is where the rapport building comes in, where what do you do after that? You know they like, they have a top two. Now what are we going to do? Yeah. Emmanuel. So so that's okay. what, what we wanted this. Uh, did you guys have a question? No? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I think it was really important, guys. And I think as a show of hands, let's figure out like who, like who's doing this stuff, right? I mean, like it's all or or Z. When you guys are out there showing properties, like what do you guys bring? Like your car keys, or what? What else are you guys bringing to the to the to, to the to the front door? Let's be honest, guys. This is a place to learn. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I don't print out anything. Um, what I do is for me, I have the MLS touch app on my phone. So I could easily check what, um, if offers are due, if there's any like restrictions on the property and I'm like telling the client, like, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, it does have a permit. It mm -hmm. does not. So I'm able to check because yeah, I've never printed those out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
this is a really, really good. Tra- this just turned into an excellent training site. I thought this was like standard, guys. I thought you guys were doing this, right? So and, this just turned into an amazing listing. What's up, Z? Say it. Yeah, and for me, um, I used to print it out uh, when I first actually when I first started, um, and I don't know, but they they didn't seem too interactive with the uh, with the paper, maybe because I didn't know how to present it. But now I I do. Um, I pre-write it uh, before I even show the home. I, I look up all the homes and, and I look up all the um, all the information of the home. And then I have it on my phone with me. And also I have the uh, MLS touch as well because it has pretty much everything. And when they go to the house, if they ask me questions, I already have it. I'm, it's already there. Yeah, I agree with Okay, Blanca. so I think, I think both so let, let, be fine, but I think the way that Blanca has it, if you do have time to print it out, it can be a much more interactive time with your clients, right? Especially after the fact, Mm -hmm. you go home and reread your notes that you walk through the property. What do I like? What do I not like? Mm -hmm. So it shows that you're listening to them, right? I know not only that that, guys, I mean, let let, let me, because I I, I do the same thing that Blanca does, right? But I I, I go, let let me tell you guys what I do as, as, as the buying side as well, right? Is not only do I do that, but what I also do is, is, is I memorize when I go out to the scene so that I'm not reading off a phone. Right. And, and, the, and the reason why you guys want to do that is because you have a short time to show competence. Right. This is you are performing. This is the performance that you're putting out there. So imagine that Blanca pulled out all the balloons. She pulls out the, the bells and whistles to, 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 to put on a performance. And then the person that comes in that comes in with their keys and their phone. Right. So it, it starts to separate you guys from the other agents is what you guys want to do. It does, Rob. But. It also has to be the way your client prefers prefers because I have clients who are a little more techie or a little more on the phone Mm -hmm. or a little more, you know, that is how they like to conduct their business. They're maybe not used to like carrying stuff around. Or writing, like they don't write anything. They don't write at all. So I bring it with me, but I say, you know, just write some notes either on this or on your phone, wherever, you know, you're going to re revisit to look at the notes about the property and what you liked and what was important or what you hated. Mm-hmm. And then also tear them out for me. Let me know which one's the most important. And we talk about it. We t- And then they asked me for my feedback. Like, what do you think of this floor that felt uneven? Cause mm-hmm. I pointed it out or whatever it was. So that we have a talk- topic of conversation for training sake. Let's just say you identify two properties, mm-hmm. the top two that the client likes. And Emmanuel has like a list of things we should do from that moment. And mm-hmm. I really want us to cover it before the training is over, because I feel like it's going to be very helpful for a lot of you agents that are going out there and you leave and you're like, okay, I'm done. I showed <laughs> and I'm on my way. Yeah. No, it does not end there. You spent the time and the day and your weekend showing. Mm-hmm. Please make it valuable and please make it productive to take it to the next step. Yeah, the, the, the biggest thing when you're taking it to the next step in this market, the most important two things to get, I think that to get your offer accepted is speed and also like persistency, right? So speed as in how fast do you get your comps and your disclosures and review it with your clients? And also how fast you get in contact with the listing agent, right? Usually after, once I, if I walk through a property and my client loves the home, I'm calling the listing agent right when I get into the car, right? So I call the listing agent and that's that first call you have with your the listing agent. That's the time to um, soften them up. I like to think of it as softening them up, getting them to know who you are and then present what you have, mm-hmm. right? Because at the end of the day, you have what the listing agent wants, was a, which is a competent buyer, Right. And your showing should be set uh, in a bracket where your clients can compete easily, right? So that whole other training, right? Um, so, so target the number two, two uh, the first two things that they should do to send to the client to get them yes. ready to prepare the offer. So the first thing, of course, speed is everything. So you want to send the comps and disclosures as fast as possible. I run through the comps fairly quickly. Just send them a, you know, a quick estimate of the comps and what we think. And then when I send disclosures, um, I'll look really quickly through the inspection reports, like the termite, because if they have anything with bids on it, I'll look through really quick. Uh, just so I have that, that number in mind, right? Whatever is quoted there. Um, and then of course, once you get into reviewing disclosures, you can go deeper into the, uh, all the other documents. Absolutely. Hey, guy. Hey, hey, um, 
And uh, Emmanuel just said something that's really critical, guy. And I think that, you know, right after you show the client, and if you, you need to learn how to read the client as well. If they show the interest, and Emmanuel just keep the key right there, call the listening agent right after you finish the showing. Because most of the time, if you go back, I, for sure, you know, other things will get in. And uh, the moment that you try to establish the connection with the listening agent just right there, right at the house. And if you have anything, anything, you can create a connection right there with the listening agent. Right, right. If you wait a day or two later, a lot of people will start and call, right? Mm -hmm. And you are there at the property and say, hey, you know, I'm here literally, you know, I'm just finished showing and my client is interested. And also you build a connection right there with a the listening agent as well. Yeah. Hey, this guy just finished, just finished. and he <laughs> called me right away. This guy is a go-getter. Very good feedback, Tony. That's super important. You're starting to build rapport with the listing agent, because that's really going to be your key opener. And that's going to be who you're going to want to make sure you build a rapport with. And a few things uh, for for the, the newer guys on some skill, uh, some skills I can share with building that rapport. You want to compliment them on their listing, right? You did such a great job. My clients loved it. You know, it shows very well. Um, the, welcoming, the, welcoming. Mm -hmm. The staging is great. So you want to fluff them up, right? And then and then you trade off information, right? So you say hey, my client is approved, we're well approved, we can buy this house twice, you know, make some jokes, right? Because they're approved, you know, for, they're looking at an $800,000 home, they're approved for 1.6, right? So, so give them some information about your clients and then you start asking information about the home, like what, uh, why is the seller selling? Um, what price are they expecting? Do you have a favorite comparable in the area, right? Um, when are you expecting offers due? How is the interest fit? Right. Um, so those are some things that you want to address on the first call, because when you hop on the call with your clients, you want to have something to give them. Right. Usually when I talk to my clients, it's always because I have something to share with them, like information. Mm -hmm. So in turn, I can get a decision from them. Right. And we have a perfect example, Emmanuel, mm -hmm. with our clients off of um, South San Jose, the Copco, the yeah. Copco yeah. property. Uh, Emmanuel built great rapport with a listing agent and Emmanuel found out that they needed a rent back. Mm -hmm. They only needed 30 days or 40 days. Mm -hmm. We offered on our offer, just we got creative. So that's going to be another thing for you guys to think is, you know, key what the listing agent is sharing with you. Mm -hmm. If the seller needs a little bit of rent back and you're in a multiple offer situation, stretch it out a little more. Maybe instead of 30 days, offer 45 days. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you want to single yourself out from everybody that's probably going to say they only need a 30 day rent back. So that's exactly what we did. And that was the winning factor. It yeah. wasn't so much price because we were neck and neck. It was because we offered an extra 15 days of free rent back. Yeah. So um, keep in mind everything they're saying because they're all good information. It's all key points and it's valuable what you're going to share with your clients. When you reconnect, you're going to say, Hey, as soon as we left, I contacted the listening agent. This is what they shared. This is what they're looking for. I think we have a good opportunity. And then of course, your offer consultation. Mm -hmm. That is gonna be key and it's very important. And I think that probably should be like another training nice, yeah. that we do is the important things on a full disclosure packet and preparing your contingencies. Mm -hmm. Do you even know if you have a full disclosure packet? What mm -hmm. are the things that should be included for you to even recommend removing contingencies. Right, right. But the steps that Emmanuel said after you send the reports and the disclosures is making sure that you have the information and preparing mm -hmm. for the offer due date. Mm -hmm. So you have a list of things that you must do after you're showing. Yeah, I think this training could be more focused on, because that would be like a whole other training, how to go through disclosures, yes. comps with your clients. Um, but it's more so this training could be how to follow up with the listing agent, mm -hmm. right? The key thing, and I've learned this through like failure is you need to stick onto the listing agent, like white on rice, right? You need to literally keep them updated on what you're doing. And you guys, we have Tony and Blanca in here that are killing it in listings. And would you guys agree that you like a straightforward agent? Right? Oh yeah. Someone that doesn't yeah. play games, yes. right? So, um, usually in a different market, you'd hold your buyer's cards close to your chest. You wouldn't tell offers, right? But in a competitive market, you may need to to shell some information yeah. out to the listing agents yeah. to show them that you're serious, right? Um, and I always try to push for preemptive offers too. That's another question you would ask the listing agent. Mm -hmm. If I were to you know, send you an offer right now, what does that number need to look like and would the seller accept it, 
right? And a lot of times they'll share it, guys. Yeah. Why? Because the listing agent wants to get it in contract. They want to move it on and they want to focus on their next listing. Yeah. So if they're, they'll share that with you, even more ammunition for you to share with your buyers. Hey, we can get this off the market and not compete if we come in, in at X number. Right. By that time, then you're already scheduling your next appointment to review all the disclosures and reports and make sure there's nothing major going on with the property and then decide to do that preemptive. One of the lines that I like to use to discover like that, to get, I, I, as soon as I get them on the phone or like if, if I'm going over everything with them, I say, hey, I just want to set expectations for my buyers and I don't want to waste anybody's time. I don't yeah. want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. Yeah. Anybody's time, right? Yeah. So... I just want to set expectations. What number are you guys looking for? There and then most of the time, they'll give me a ballpark figure. Um, and then obviously, I'll go into the rest of it. And I think what would help with that conversation is if you do comparables first, yeah. right? So I would also say before you call the listing agent, get an idea of what the home is worth. So yeah. you have numbers to bounce off of, right? Exactly. Going deeper into like Alfredo's comment, um, if they were to give you a price, say, hey, I don't know, there's a comp in this area for like, 1.2, this one's listed at a million, right? Mm -hmm. So now knowing what the value is, now you can play the game of shooting numbers out, right? What if yeah. we do 1.25 or 1.275? Right? Guys, yeah. and that's also another really good uh, factor to eliminate wasting time. Mm -hmm. When you are working with a buyer and they send you a home that's listed at 1.2 and they're telling you their max is 1.1. 1 .1. Right. Right? What would be the conversation or what would be the recommendation before going out there? Maybe doing a quick comp search because that's probably a very aggressive market list price anyway, which means that that pro property is probably going to go above 1.2. Mm -hmm. And here's your buyer thinking maybe they can discount it or maybe they can get it at the 1.1, not knowing that that neighborhood is a higher um sale price yeah but i Remember, think at that point you wouldn't even show the house so. exactly you yeah. eliminate some time and you say hey maybe this is one we need to skip and don't be afraid to have that conversation mm -hmm. and i guess that would be before like what this training was yeah. on right yeah. so when but it could happen yeah it could happen it could yeah. happen on the list that they send you yeah be very cautious guys and make sure you're looking at the list price and make sure you do a quick comp search and know what that um, market is doing because why you're going to eliminate having a drive to that one home when it's possibly not in their price point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had clients that are stuck on that home. It's past, it's over their <laughs> head. But all I do is I, it takes me, what, five minutes, maybe 10, run the comp, send them a quick CMA. They and see then, it. And then put yeah, it they see it. That's all you really right? need to yeah. do at that point. Provide value. Right? Yeah. Provide value. Yeah. Yeah. They do a lot of time, too. A lot of them, you know, a lot of buying now is just take, right? They, they rather, you know, do for us to be straightforward. Take that time, okay, awesome. Yep. And not and only that, Tony, we, we know the market. and energy, because they yeah. get invested. Right. Clients get invested in the outcome, their energy, their emotions. Mm -hmm. It's it's mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Good the feedback. Worst thing, the worst thing is show them and create so much traffic for them. They can not do it. Yes. Right. Yes. That's the worst thing. Yes. Yep. They're going to drop too. <laughs> Yeah. So, so the, um, yeah, I think the biggest thing is with the listing agent side, because everything else is kind of a technical, like other training is always stay in front of the listing agent, bring positive energy to them. Don't, you know, you know, where your buyer's at. Um, don't be scared to, you know, share some information on that. What I usually do is if I have a buyer coming into a home and we're nearing close to the offer deadline, I'll give them a price, my client's price minus like 25 K. Right. So um, if I think that the home is going to sell to say it's listed for 1.2, it might go for 1.4 and my buyer is willing to go up to 1425, I'll just start off low, right? 1.4, where do we land there, right? Um, if it's a little bit more tight and the listing agent literally isn't giving you any information on where you need to be and comps are hard, um, at that point, I would consider just telling them where my offer is, maybe minus like five grand, yeah. right? Like where, where do we stack up given, given this you know, mm -hmm. scenario, mm -hmm. right? Um, Any questions in the Zoom audience? <laughs> Any questions here? Hey guys, this, this, these trainings that we're having, guys, works a lot better if we ask questions. I know a lot of us are new. So do me a favor. I know that we're talking amongst the office here. There's questions that are being asked. So do me a favor, ask the group. This is an opportunity for you guys to ask and, and get your, get to get the, get your questions answered by top producers in the office. 
So do me a favor, participate. Uh, Beto has a so, question. I, I don't know if this is like a comment or I just wanted to like think of it. Yeah. So you're saying, you know, if you see a property and uh, you really like it, then after the showing, because, you know, call the listing agent and get some comments and disclosure and this and that. What if that property is like, like at the beginning of like the list of homes you have lined up? You know, are you going to be calling the listing agent and doing all this, all this research? Yeah. Where you have your buyers like waiting. I would say, I would say that that conversation with the listing agent doesn't need to be that long and that thorough. Just say, Hey, I just viewed your home or it could be a text, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for letting us view the home. My clients really love it. I'd love to connect with you uh, later in the day. And leave so it we at can that. talk about it. Okay. Yeah. And leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Or kind of play it by ear. Yeah. If you're showing homes early on in the day, like 11 and you end your showings at one or two, Take a few minutes in your car and you go through them. The mm -hmm. top three, the right. top three that you know they like. You're not going to call all five listings that you visit if there's yeah. no interest in all five. But maybe the top two, the top three that your client shared with you, mm -hmm. contact the listing agent. The key yeah. is just to be like in front of their face. Yeah, like they need to know who you are and that you have something that they need. Which is we just toured your listing. Yeah. My clients really like it. They love the backyard. They love the living room. They love the openness. Whatever feedback your client gives you. I noticed you have an offer due date. Are you guys open to preemptive offers? Mm -hmm. These are all important questions so that you can show value to your clients. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you're going to check back in with them. You're going to say, hey, I have some information to share with you on your top three. Yeah. And this is what it is. And mm -hmm. this is what it is. If we're open for a preemptive, we would have to be at this price point. No, they're going to wait for offer due date. So let's be ready. And um, let's review everything together to mm -hmm. get you to that point. And that's another training on reviewing the disclosures, the reports, getting ready to submit the offer and how to prepare them. Mm -hmm. As a listing agent, how often do you follow up with your buyers As a listing agent, the only time you follow up is when it's a buyer's market. Because it's scarce, because yeah. there's not a lot. But as a listing agent, from experience, and Tony can probably get to this too, you have tons of agents and clients coming through your listing that it's super hard to connect. I had a listing agent text me three times with my contact number. There's no offers. <laughs> yeah, then there, yeah, so, There's no so that's offers. another thing that, so Aaron's bringing oh, Aaron up, brought up a really, yeah. go ahead. Uh, Aaron's Sorry. bringing up a scenario. We know like transacting in the market, usually listing agents don't follow up with the yeah. buyer's agents, right? So it's really important that you keep an eye out for like, I'd say like red flags. If someone is, if the listing agent's bugging you for an offer, they have no offers, right? Um, so now you bring that to your clients, bring the expertise to the table, say, hey guys, um, this usually doesn't happen. I think there are no offers on the table. If you're interested in the home, let's offer quick, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Before anyone else figures this out. If this is one that you like yeah. and it meets, it checks off the check boxes, let's move forward we probably have a good opportunity of getting this home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a red yeah. flag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, especially if I have some yeah. 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 I think, I think. Thank you for sharing. One, That's a good point. Uh, question for you, Blanca, since Aaron brought it up. As a listing agent, how do you want the buyer's agent to follow up with you? Like, are you the type to uh, be annoyed if someone calls you every single day, seeing if you'd accept the preemptive offer? Are you okay with people being a little bit more aggressive to you? Like, hey, Blanca, I have an offer for you right now. I don't care if you're going to review it. I'm just going to send it to you. By law, you need to review with your client. Yeah. yeah. Well, how do you feel about I, that? I feel that from the listing side perspective, it's good when agents build rapport and give me feedback on the client mm -hmm. and tell me why they like the property, if they're planning on living in it, giving me some background because then that helps us share it with our sellers. Mm -hmm. Now, it gives also a perspective of how uh, professional the buyer's agent is, how experienced they are, um, how knowledgeable they are about this client, how much willingness they have to work to get the deal done. Mm -hmm. it, it just it gives a lot of character on the buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. Whether they're pestering or whatever, I would say when you do get a hold of that listing agent, make it valuable, make sure you ask the key points. Don't waste time because they're probably super busy getting slammed with calls. And you don't want to be calling every five, 10 minutes for things you could have covered in the one call. And I think, I think you would agree. One thing I think listing agents appreciate if there is something wrong with the home, like say they have a $30,000 termite damage, you as a buyer's agent acknowledge that and mm -hmm. acknowledge that your client knows about it, right? Yeah. 
and yeah. say like, hey guys, like they're aware of it. They're totally fine with it. We, we still want to purchase a home. So it gives the listing agent a peace of mind that nothing's going to come up down the line too. And I think I could speak for PRG team as a whole. I hope we never send an offer without communicating with the listing agent or mm -hmm. trying. Mm -hmm. If you actually catch them live, that's great. But if you're trying, you're sending texts, you're sending email and the listing agent is not being responsive because it does happen where they don't respond, but you're making yourself known and present and either via text or via email or via phone message, mm -hmm. you need to do that. I, I've received offers where I don't even know who it is and it just comes in. I still have to call because I'm doing my due diligence for my sellers, but that's like the worst thing to do when an agent just sends an offer and you don't even know who it is, when it came in and what the client is about. Mm -hmm. It's almost like I'm just sending it just to see if it happens. And if not, then. So like when you're presenting offers to the sellers, then is it just like those offers that's like, you don't, you don't know who the agent is, who the buyers are or anything like that. Like you just like kind of have those presented with the high. Cause at the end of the day, it's the sellers. Choice. Yeah. Like no. Are, yeah, or? that's a really good um, question, Erin, and that's going to be a whole nother okay. training. Uh -huh. But let me tell you why, because we have a really good format where we have an Excel sheet where we're lining in the offers that are coming in, and we still do our due diligence and reach out to the loan agent, reach out to the agent, whether they connected with us or not. Why? Because we're probably going to do a multiple counter situation, and we want to see who's in or who's not. Well, we'll do another training on that, but that's good. Good question. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think that would apply to us because I don't think we'd ever do that. You know, like yeah. we would never just yeah. show well, I'm like a seller's agent. I, I mean, logically, they would like, think look at it differently because they don't know who you are. They never talked to your lender. Yeah. They haven't verified any proof of funds. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Um, I think that's it. I think we covered. It. Yeah, I think. <laughs> Is there any other questions? I know this one was kind of fast, but it's kind of just- Did we go fast, guys? Or you guys are grasping uh, some feedback? I have a question. Kind of the, I, think, hold on, I think Jerry has a question regarding- Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I, just wanted to, I just wanted to ask if it's possible, if we have time to like role play a scenario where you have to do that initial call for the listing agent. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that after. Yeah. I have, I, my Zoom isn't upgraded, but we, so I have like four minutes left. Uh, Let's do it real quick. Anybody else have a quick question before we do the role play? Let's do it real quick. Okay. Do you okay. Want to be the agent? I'll be the agent and you're the buyer's agent. Okay. okay. You're calling me on Ruby. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Blanca. Hey. How are you doing today? Good. Good. Uh, Emmanuel here from PRG Real Estate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah. Emmanuel. Hi, how are you doing today? Good. Awesome. So my clients just viewed your listing on Rabizi and they love it, Blanca. Oh, They okay. love the home. They can see themselves living here with their family um, and they're excited to uh, submit an offer to you. Oh, nice. Good, yeah. good. Well, yeah, my, my clients took a little bit of a pride and they prepped it and they're leaving the country. They're awesome. retiring, but this was their family home. Okay, perfect, perfect. Were they the original owners? Yes. Awesome, awesome. I mean, you guys did a great job. The home looks very well kept. You can definitely tell that the, the homeowners love the home. Right? Yes, yes. So Thank you, Emmanuel. Hopefully, yeah. you know, my buyers will be able to, you know, live in there as well. Um, in regards to the interest, how's the interest been so far? We've I know been, yeah, we've been crazy busy. Yeah, because you did such a good job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, this weekend has been crazy busy. We have over 50 visits. 50 visits. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank okay. You. Sounds good. Um, do you have you are you going to be setting an offer due date soon? We do you are, have any offers in hand? We are going to be setting an offer due date, Emmanuel. And the reason why is my sellers want to give enough exposure to the house. Got so it. we will be reviewing offers on Tuesday. Got it. Got it. Got it. Do you have any offers in hand currently? No, but I have tons of clients expressing interest, interest. and that they will be um, submitting. Cool. So I want to be fair and I want to give everybody a chance and we're definitely. reviewing offers on Tuesday. I definitely understand. And I appreciate that of you, Blanca. You know, I know a lot of listing agents, they don't really give a chance to us buyers agents out there. So yeah, I appreciate I know, that. I know. I'm in the game. I've been in the business, so I know awesome. how it is. Oh yeah. I know you're in the game. I see your signs everywhere. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So we're doing offer due dates. Are they open at all to a preemptive offer? Uh, no, Emmanuel, I did talk to them about it, but no, they want to give everybody a fair opportunity. And like I said, it's our first week mm -hmm. on the market. So we want to give it enough exposure. Sounds good. Well, I mean, you're, you're a great agent for doing that, right? Yeah, it's it's yeah, important yeah. to get, give your listings as much exposure as possible. Yeah. Um, sounds good. So I would just recommend Emmanuel, a clean offer. 
Clean offer, clean highest offer, and best, Blanca. Highest and best, of course. clean offer, good terms. Okay. And we'll, I promise, you know, to look at it. Sounds good. Okay. Um, do you guys have a specific comp or expectation in terms of pricing or like comp that you're looking at? You know uh, what? Um, when I visited them, there is a comp in the area that sold for 930. So that kind of set the bar. Okay. And this is the one on Rabizi Circle yes. as well, mm -hmm. right? Okay. I did yeah. see that one. Um, yours does look a little bit better. So you might be able to get higher for this one. Possibly. That's the goal. Okay, do like, they have a set expectation in mind in terms well, of pricing? Well, we reviewed the comps, and uh -huh. that 9.30 just kind of really set the tone. 9.30. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. And it seems like you have a good amount of interest, so maybe a little bit over that. Yeah. Okay, um, sounds good. Well, I appreciate the information. I want to share some uh, uh, some information about my clients. Sure. They're pre-approved up to 1.6. They work here in Santa Clara, so... Um, it's a little bit farther away from their work, but they're willing to commute. Okay. Um, they're first time home buyers, really excited. They're very serious. Nice. Uh, we've been looking for around a couple months now. Yeah. So we understand the game. We're not here to waste anyone's time. Okay. Um, if my offer is competitive at all, you know, I'm op we're always open to communication. I'm always on my phone. So feel free to call me if you have any questions and I'll follow up. I appreciate that feedback, Emmanuel. Thank you. Sounds good. So Blanca, I have to ask, if I give you an offer, at you know maybe 20k over 9 30 would you guys be willing to take it you know it's early on emmanuel okay. for us to really say but if you want to check in with sure. me on offer due date yeah um i can advise as best possible but right now honestly it's a little early on so yeah. my advice is just come in as strong as possible your bet your best foot forward and mm -hmm. we'll go from there awesome sounds good oh last question does the seller need any uh special terms on a contract like rent back or anything like that no it's vacant already okay, so, so they're yeah they're already relocating um they just need to finalize the sale awesome perfect okay so hopefully you know i appreciate the information okay. of course i'll be in touch with you as you know the days goes on to see how things are going cool. and i'll send you my contact information so you can keep in touch as well sounds good thank you emmanuel thank you i'll also include my pre-approval with my with the text so you, you know that we're serious okay sounds cool. great thank you thank you and that's one thing I wanted to touch on. Some, sometimes when it gets competitive, I'll even send my pre-approval either before the